party? Come on, are you guys ready to party? Hey, I was lost with a broken heart Pick me up and now I'm set apart From the ashes I'm born Forever safe in the Savior's hands Come on! You are more than my words to say Pressing on till I see your face I fix my eyes following your ways Forever spring in an empty grace You are the star, come on! You are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, we lift you higher Your love, your love, your love Fell an empty world of love So come on You are my love Nothing can take your place You are all we need You let us set us free
Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. How many of you guys have been forgiven in this place? Come on, I know I have. Come on. Where was that? All right. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Can you pause that right there? Just pause that right there, Robin. Oh, man. So we're going to open up the altar here for a little bit. And uh, I know most of these folks up here, and they're probably the realest, some of the coolest people that I've ever met in my whole life. These two jokes over here I went to India with. They're crazy for Jesus, but they love people unconditionally no matter what. So if you're going through something, like James said, come up and have the elders of the church pray for you. If you're sick, come up. There's a God that heals. People think that it's craziness, or they think that it's weird or whatever, but you know what? There's a living God that created us. Sorry, I'm gonna go on a rant. Look at your, your hands, all right? Look at your hands, look at your eyeballs. The fact that we are here, the fact that we exist is mind blowing. And people just go day to day not even thinking about it. There is a God that created you and loves you and wants the best for your life. So if you want to encounter a God that loves you, these altars are open and he's waiting for you with open arms. Come on, let's play another song.
something that can be measured? Is it something that can be observed? Can it ever be fully known? From a young age, we fear the unknown. We grow restless with unanswered questions. We hypothesize, experiment, and study to make our chaotic world predictable, controllable, and comfortable. But one broken man, deemed clinically insane, found peace in the confines of a cell as he brought to life words from centuries past on the cell wall, which would later become the third stanza in Frederick M. Lehman's hymn, The Love of God. Sanity came to him not through knowing, but through believing, not by understanding, but by trusting. Perhaps we can find peace in accepting a love that is too deep to comprehend, and comfort in an embrace that stretches beyond our horizons. For the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell.
Come on, let's put our hands together for the love of God this morning. Just, just give God your praise this morning, just for a couple of seconds. Jesus, we love you. We worship you this morning. God, your love is so rich and it is so free and it extends to us. And God, we didn't walk into this place today because we are righteous. We didn't walk into this place today because we are good. God, we didn't come here. Not one of us could stand here on our own. But we stand here because of you, Jesus. That your love was so rich and free that you stretched your arms out on a cross to take my place. That's the kind of love I want to discover today. I want to meet with you today, Jesus, because your love can heal. Your love can move a mountain. Your love can do what I cannot do. So, Lord, I'm I'm asking that you would release that into this room right now. That your love and your mercy and your grace would overcome our shame. Your love, your mercy, and your grace would overcome our sickness. That it would overcome all of our doubts and our fears and our inhibitions. And that you would see right through to the heart of us. All the ways that we would want to hide, all the ways that we would want to front, all the ways that we would want other people to think that we're so good or right or whatever that is, we just lay it all down right now. We come to you, Jesus, as we are. We didn't get it right to walk through the doors today, but we came because you got it right. And we need a Savior. We need one who is more than enough, one who is faithful, one who is pure, one who is good, one who will always come through. And so, Jesus, we declare that, that you are the faithful one, you are the good one, you are the pure one, and you will always come through. So, God, we ask, we are so grateful for all that you've provided for us. And we ask this morning that we wouldn't go through this day without having met with you. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone together said amen. Amen. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Give them a high five as you go ahead and find your seat. Awesome. What an awesome day. I've just been blown away all day with how, how good God is and how awesome you all are. So, yay, welcome to Two Rivers Assembly. We are so glad you're here. My name is Crystal. I'm Pastor Will's wife, and I get the privilege of welcoming all of our guests today. So can we give it up for all of our first-time guests? We are so glad you're here, and we want you to feel welcome. And we also want you to know that you are invited to come back at least three times. We know that it's kind of hard to get to know who we are and what we're all about on just one visit, so we want to make sure you know you're welcome to come back at least three times. And then in your, in your chair, you should have gotten a welcome brochure, and inside that brochure is a contact card. If you take a moment during church to fill it out, If you are a first-time guest, after service, you'll go out these doors and up the steps to our guest services station. And there, if you'll turn that in, you get a little treat from us. But also, you'll get throughout the week an email with more information about Two Rivers, with links to Will's past messages, and a letter explaining tea groups. Um, And so we just want, we want something for you, and it's a great way to stay connected with what we're doing and what we're all about. And then for the rest of us, um, love hearing your prayer requests on the bottom part of this card. If you'll write your prayer request down and turn it in as you leave, we pray for you each week at staff meeting. There are people, hundreds of people that pray for you each week um, that are prayer partners for us. So we believe that God does miracles, and so we're going to ask him. So at the end of service, uh, if you want to fill that out, there'll be a person standing by that door as you leave. Drop it in the bucket. So can we give one more hand uh, clap for all of our guests? Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, Crystal. Uh, My name is John. I serve on uh, small groups here at Two Rivers. It's my pleasure to uh, 
Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the point of our service where we're going to take our tithes and offerings uh, and worship the Lord. So if the ushers could prepare themselves. The reason uh, we, we can be in an awesome place like this and the reason we have the things we have is because of the way that you got all worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings. So we'd like to say thank you. There's directions on the screen on how to give online. And uh, we'd like to just say everyone who, who has given in the past this thank you. Thank you for being so faithful. Uh, we're going to close in prayer before we go into announcements. Uh, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for providing us a place in a different section of Binghamton where we can come and we can worship you, Father. In a new community, Father. In a new place where we can reach new people in, in, in just awesome ways. We thank you for every blessing you bestow upon us each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Turn your uh, attention to the screen. Thank you. Our journey to this moment began in November of 2010. Will and I began to feel God's leading to start a new church in Binghamton, New York. So after Thanksgiving Day on a nine-hour trip home from Cincinnati, Ohio to Springfield, Missouri, we began to dream about what a life-giving church would look like. We wanted a church where people could be themselves, where people could look, act, talk, vote, or smell any way they want. A church where our individuality could be expressed in a biblical framework. A church where people could experience a life-changing encounter with God through authentic community with real people. People whom God is desperately running after. People who are imperfect, realize it, and don't pretend to be otherwise. People who are on a journey of faith and know from experience that that journey doesn't always look as beautiful or as nice as we'd hoped. People in all stages of life. Real people on real journeys. We wanted a church that would never be content looking inward at itself, but would always exist to serve those who are not yet a part of it. A church full of people who give sacrificially to each other. A church that is known for what it stands for instead of what it stands against. A church that makes an impact in the Two Rivers area. One that would be missed if it wasn't there. A church where faith is not about what we do at church, rather what we do with the rest of our lives. A church that is not driven by programs, but is a living, breathing organism because it's us and what we do every day. Most of all, a church where people's lives are transformed. Only a few years later, and we now believe that this vision doesn't just belong to us. This vision is shared by many more people than we can imagine. Maybe you're one of them. Let's find out together.